So let's begin our discussion on electromagnetic waves by looking at the following paragraph. So recall that a change in magnetic field will produce an electric field that itself will also change over time. Now this changing electric field will in turn produce a change in magnetic field which will once again produce yet another changing electric field. And this process will continue. Now James Clerk Maxwell, a Scottish physicist, was able to show that the net result of these changing fields is a wave that consists of a changing electric field and changing magnetic field that can propagate without the presence of a medium through empty space via the self-sustaining process that was discussed in the following paragraph. Now to begin our discussion on electromagnetic waves, let's examine the formation of electromagnetic waves by looking at the following three diagrams. So let's begin with diagram one. So in diagram one we have the following antenna which essentially consists of two rods. So we have the upper rod and the lower rod. Now we have the following open switch that is connected to the following AC or alternating current generator. Now at time of zero seconds the switch is open as shown in a following diagram and that implies no electric current will flow through these two rods of our antenna. Now let's move on to diagram number two. Now in diagram two, let's suppose at a time of T1, our switch is closed as follows. Now when the switch is closed, our AC generator begins to produce an alternating electric current that travels through our two rods of our antenna. So the switch is closed and the AC generator produces an electric current that flows, let's say, in the upward direction as shown in the following diagram. So initially, when the switch is closed, our electric current flows in the following general direction. So that basically means that this upper rod will have a positive charge and this lower rod will have a negative charge. Now because this develops a positive charge and this develops a negative charge, that basically means we have a separation of electric charge and that in turn produces an electric field. And the electric field lines will begin on the positive rod and will travel and end on the negative rod as shown by the following green electric field lines. So once again, this produces an electric field that begins on the positive rod and ends on the negative rod. Now also, the electric current that travels through these metallic rods, through these conducting rods, produces a magnetic field whose direction is found by applying the right hand rule. So we essentially take our right hand and we wrap our hand, our fingers around our wire so that our extended thumb points in the same direction as the direction of our electric current. So that basically means that our magnetic field formed by the moving electric current through the conducting wire will form concentric circles that will point into the board at these locations as shown by the following circles with the X. So these blue circles with the X symbolize our magnetic field while these green lines symbolize our electric field. Now, 
Let's move on to diagram three. Now, diagram three essentially symbolizes a situation after this takes place. So let's suppose we're looking at some later time T2. So at a later time T2, our electric current will essentially reverse. So because we're dealing with an AC generator, this AC generator is essentially powered by an alternating voltage source. Because the voltage reverses after some time, the electric current will also reverse. So when the electric current reverses, the new electric and magnetic fields will also reverse directions as shown in the following region. So notice that these electric fields and magnetic fields formed in diagram 2 after some time will continue traveling in the following direction and they will end up somewhere in this location. So after some time, at some time, T2, when these reverse directions, these have moved to the following further location. Now, notice because our direction of the electric current now reverses, our eye will travel downward as shown by the following orange arrows. Now, this will have a negative charge, this will have a positive charge, and that means our electric field lines will begin on the positive and will end on the negative, and that's shown by the following two arrows. Now, likewise, if we apply right-hand rule number one, we see that the magnetic fields now point out of the board as shown by the following circles with a dot. So, the circle with the dot simply means our electric field direction or our magnetic field direction points out of the board while these X's symbolize our magnetic field pointing into the board. Now, what exactly is the result? Well, because the new fields change directions as a result of the change in direction of our electric field, the old fields fold back onto one another and form closed continuous loops as shown in the following diagram. So these two regions are the regions of our electric fields that were formed in diagram 2 which moved further as shown in this diagram. And they will fold on to these electric fields that are formed as a result of diagram 3 in which our electric current essentially reverse directions. So we have electric fields pointing in the following direction produced by this diagram and these electric fields were produced by this diagram. And the same thing is true with with these magnetic fields. So we see that we get the following circular loops or the following continuous loops that are traveling in the following direction. Now, when our propagating loops are very far from the antenna source, the wave fronts are nearly flat as shown in the following diagram. So as this propagates further and further away, way these align parallel with respect to one another so these become nearly flat so what exactly can we conclude from the following information about the formation of our electromagnetic waves well two important things can be deduced so point number one electric and magnetic fields are always perpendicular to one another and they're also perpendicular to the direction to the velocity of our propagating electromagnetic wave. And point number two, the fields alternate directions. That is, when the electric field is at a maximum, the magnetic field is also at a maximum. And when our electric field is at a minimum, the magnetic field is also at a minimum. So let's continue our discussion on electromagnetic waves. 
So we basically see that because an alternating current generator produces electromagnetic waves, if our voltage source varies sinusoidally, that means the strength of the electric and magnetic fields produced also varies sinusoidally. In fact, we can plot the strength of the two fields with respect to time as shown in the following diagram. So let's suppose this is our y-axis, this is our x-axis, and this is our z-axis, which is coming out of the board as shown by the following arrow. So we see that this green sinusoidal curve represents our electric field, while the blue sinusoidal curve represents our magnetic field. We see that our electric field moves up and down along the y-axis while our magnetic field moves up and down along our z-axis and they're always perpendicular with respect to one another because the y and z axes are always perpendicular with respect to one another. We also see that our electric electromagnetic wave essentially propagates along the x-axis so it's moving from left to right and that also means that the direction of our propagating electromagnetic wave is perpendicular with respect to the electric and magnetic fields because the x-axis is perpendicular to both the z and y axes so once again notice that the magnetic and electric fields are always perpendicular with respect to one another and also perpendicular to the motion of our wave in this case in the positive direction along the x-axis. Now if we know the direction of the electric and magnetic field at any given moment in time we can use the right hand rule to essentially determine the direction of the velocity of our propagating wave. So to find the direction of the motion of the wave we apply the right hand rule. So we take our right hand and we point our fingers along the direction of the electric field. So let's suppose we choose this point in time. So at this point in time we take our right hand and we point our fingers in the direction along our electric field so up. Then we curl our fingers along the direction of the magnetic magnetic field in this case it's out of the board so we point up this way and then we extend the thumb and the thumb points in the same direction as the velocity of our wave as the direction of the wave motion so in the positive direction along the x-axis so from these results we see the following important point so because an alternating current generator is used to produce to form an electromagnetic wave that basically means that accelerating electric charge produces our electromagnetic waves that can propagate through empty space in the absence of any type of medium. So electromagnetic waves essentially consist of alternating electric and magnetic fields which are perpendicular with respect to one another and perpendicular with respect to the motion of that field. Now we also see from these two points that our magnetic field and electric field reach a max maximum and a minimum at the same exact point. So at this point our electric and magnetic fields are zero, at this point they're also zero, at this point they're zero, and at this point they're zero. Now at this point, at this point, at this point, and at this point they either reach a minimum or a maximum and that is a fact regarding electromagnetic waves.